Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Faithfulness, yes. Thank you, Sister, Sister Smith, for that. All right? So our topic is faith, but we're incorporating within that faithfulness because they are connected. All right? Faith and faithfulness, they are connected. So when a person say that they have faith, it is expected that they will be faithful. Okay, next slide. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Awesome. First John 5 verse 4, right? That the victory that overcomes the world is our faith that's why it is so important to understand faith and the reason why i'm going to place so much emphasis on this topic we're going to be dealing with this for a few weeks is because based upon my observation many of us who started out in faith are not operating by faith all right we think we are but we really are not and i presume it's because of a lack of understanding okay lack of understanding so my job will be to make sure you understand faith so that now it can improve you can improve in your walk with god all right it is the victory that overcomes the world next slide faith is the key that brings heaven and earth together it is the reason at rest with god it is the means God chose to make his all ours. It is the great indispensable to the life of, of victory. It is abundant trust in trustworthiness of God. All right. So faith is the key that brings heaven and earth together. Right. Um, some of you maybe you still do but they invented a term called window shopping right what it means is go to the store look at things want it but for some reason don't purchase it there's a new trend going on it's not new but i'm seeing it even in a lot of restaurants now where you go there are no prices on the menu why if you have to ask you can't afford it okay because you go to the store primarily because you want to exchange you want their goods they want your money that is the purpose of shopping so money is the currency that makes you and the vendor have a relationship if you go to the store without money to the vendor you're wasting his time okay you go to the store with money and they don't have your merchandise you're wasting your time right money is the currency that brings the uh uh the merchant or the vendor with the shopper okay that's what brings you to, together what brings heaven and earth together is the currency of faith this faith that you need in order to transact business with heaven anything you're going to receive from god you're only going to receive it through faith okay so 
it brings heaven and earth together, but faith is also, it is reason at rest with God. And, and we're going we're gonna to go into that, right? Reason or reasoning or rationale, okay? In order for faith to be active, reason must take a rest. You cannot have active reason and active faith at the same time, simultaneously, okay? In order for faith to become active, reason and rationale must take a back seat, see? That is why I um, stated that many of us are struggling because we started out in faith. We started out believing that if I obeyed the gospel, I didn't understand the gospel, but we obeyed it, I would be saved. We did obey by faith, we got saved, but now somehow, because we have mastered some things, all of a sudden, we know everything. And we have to understand everything. Everything has to make sense now before we can obey it. Well, guess what? We have stepped out of faith, right? It is the means God chooses to make his, whatever belongs to him, the only way you can access it is faith, see? So if you are re reaching a level or a state where it's no longer faith but reason or rationale or understanding if you're going to obey or if you're going to do what God says, then guess what? You are denying yourself access to all that belongs to God. Okay? It is the great indispensable to the life of Victory. Remember that first, first verse. It is the victory that overcomes the world. You're only going to overcome as your faith remains active. Many of us are trying to live off of dormant faith, rusty faith, corroded faith. See, we're trying to live off of yesterday's faith and that's why we're not seeing the victory that god wants us to have okay if faith is going to really accomplish god's will in our lives it is abandoned trust trust that don't make no sense i'm trusting in god's trustworthiness not in my own reasoning or rationale, but I'm trusting in God's trustworthiness. Next slide. Now, faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11 verse 1. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, Hebrews right. 11 verse 6. Amen. All right. So again, understand here that faith, vibrant faith, is vital to your existence, to your growth, to your sustenance, to, your, to you being sustained. In order for you to move forward, God is always, always, always testing your faith god is always 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 putting us through different tests and circumstances to improve to advance to strengthen our faith why because god knows that that is how you and him can interact all right 
So you, 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 you've got to understand that what you're dealing with at times, while it, not makes, it may not make sense to you, to God it makes absolute sense. Why? Because he is doing it, he's allowing it, and you're wondering, why is this happening? Why that? Why that? We don't ask God why. We look at patterns. And that's the pattern of God, that he tries our faith. He tests our faith. Why? Because he wants to build our faith. Because often we allow our faith to become dormant. And we begin to depend upon reason. We begin to depend upon human understanding. And when you begin to depend upon reason and understanding, it affects your walk with God. Okay? It affects your ability to walk with God. God will not walk with the faithless. God will not walk with the faithless. And we have started out in faith. We obtained salvation because of faith. In God's grace and then all of a sudden now we become teenagers we become grown up now we don't need to listen to listen to anybody now it's based upon what I feel it's based upon what I think see no God will always work on your faith to make sure it is active and alive so he will always be pulling you into situations that don't make sense to you so he can test your faith right so it can be active in your life so that you can have a relationship with him and when we resist when we resist what god is trying to do then guess what we are stepping out of that relationship with god next slide please Next slide. The victory that overcomes. The failure to understand and apply faith is the basis of all defeat in the Christian life. We obtain salvation on the grounds of God's grace through the means of faith. But this is only the beginning of faith. The Bible declares the just shall live by faith, Hebrews 10 verse 38. The life of righteousness requires faith. The declaration, the just shall live by faith, is a statement of rigid fact. Saving faith must become a pattern of living faith. Overcoming faith is simply the application of the faith that brought us into the salvation experience. So the satisfaction of every need in the life of the saved. Okay, so understand. Saving faith is different from living faith so we had faith to be saved but we don't have faith to live we had faith to be saved but we don't have faith to overcome let, let, let's 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 pay attention to that folks right let, let's parse that let's let's break that down right because we we all came into this somebody taught us a bible study and told us that we were sinners and we were destined for hell and salvation was offered to us and because we didn't want to go to hell we wanted to be saved they said you got to repent we said i repent they said you got to get baptized we got baptized we did not understand what was taking place they said, come to the altar and pray. We prayed and we began to speak in tongues. And it blew our minds because it was not as if we understood it before we did it. We only obeyed because we believed. So we had faith to save us. But now comes the time to live the life of faith. And rather than approaching it the, with the same attitude. It, it's amazing. How come 
you trusted your pastor? How come you trusted your mentor, whoever it was that drew you to Christ? How come you trusted them in order to obtain salvation? And all of a sudden, now that you're in the church, they mean you so bad that what they're telling you must be so wrong just because you don't understand it or you don't agree with it? See, we have gone from saving faith to living by sight. We started out with saving faith, but we have not incorporated obedient, living, overcoming faith, applying faith to our lives daily. See? To satisfy every need in our lives. We need to begin to apply living faith. Bible says when you, 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 you leave the principles of the doctrine, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, go on to perfection. It's all by faith. But you got to leave from saving faith to living faith, to overcoming faith. See? We cannot now, after we have started out, begin to live our lives by reason and human understanding, folks. We have departed from the faith. Next slide. A simple grasp of what faith is and how it operates will thrust the average, ordinary life into dimensions of dynamic, living never before imagined. Yet it is true that the Christian world is general, has not yet graduated from spiritual kindergarten and the meaning and might of. All right. So when we grasp what faith truly is and how faith brought us into this awesome relationship with God and how faith truly operates in our lives, when we truly grasp that and understand that, our lives will move from the ordinary into the extraordinary. God did not call you. God did not save you to live ordinary lives. Where do we get that from? That all of a sudden, now that you've come to Christ, now that you've obtained salvation, now you can just go back to doing things that you used to do before. Where do we get that from? Where, where is that principle in our Bible? Where is the pattern for that? That's not the church that Jesus Christ established on earth. Read the book of Acts. It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit. It's the Acts of the apostles, it is called, but it is the church of the living God on the move, operating by faith. So we live outside of the, para the, the, the parameters of what God has called us to live because we get our feet wet just enough to say we are saved. We had enough faith to get saved. But somehow we cannot muster enough faith to live a life of faith, to walk a walk of faith, right? So we are Christians and we go through these rituals and these motions, fooling ourselves, thinking we have faith, when all the while we are still in spiritual kindergarten. Because... I gave the analogy at the beginning of the children when they were babies and how as parents, we did everything for them. We taught them everything, everything we taught them. How to eat, how to chew, how to hold a bottle, how to bathe, how to use the bathroom, how to put on their clothes how to tie their shoelaces, how to cross the street, how to live. We taught them so much and they trusted the voice of their parents when they were young. Then all of a sudden, I'm in high school now. I'm a teenager. 
You don't know what you're talking about, Dad. You know what you're talking about, Mom. And they go about doing their own thing only to come back some 10 years later when they have learned and realized, oh, my parents were right in the first place. See? So we go through that same transition in our spiritual walk where we come in the church as babies and we listen to the message of the gospel we embrace it and because we um, embrace it by faith we now have a relationship with god and all of a sudden now that i have my own relationship with god i don't need a relationship with the pastor I don't need a relationship with the people who taught me Bible studies in the first place. I don't need you anymore because now I know God for myself. And before you know it, we are walking by reason. We are walking by human understanding. And then our Christian walk becomes crooked. And the blessings are not flowing in our lives. And we are wondering why. And we tell ourselves we have faith. But all you have is really kindergarten faith. God wants us to mature in our faith. Next slide. Next slide. The Bible informs us that without faith, it is impossible to please him. Hebrews 11, 8. We are enjoined to examine ourselves, whether ye be in the faith. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. The Bible informs us that therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Romans 1, 17. We are exhorted to stand fast in the faith. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. And the believer is to walk by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Paul affirmed that the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Galatians 2.20. Jesus advised his disciples, have faith in God. Mark 11. Okay. Examine yourself. Ask yourself. The way how you make decisions, the way how you live your life, are you living by faith? Or are you living by reason? Notice he says, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So it is very important that we understand how faith plays a major role in our day-to-day -day lives, in our day-to-day -day decisions. Because we can find ourselves not living by God's righteousness when we cease to operate in faith. We've seen it throughout the Bible. God called Abraham and indeed he went out and started out in faith. But when the famine came, when he was concerned about his well-being, he came up with a plan. And he started to depend upon reason. When God said he was have a son, he believed God. But then when the son did not come, he started to depend upon reason. So this is not just something that uh, 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 some folks experience. It is all through our Bibles. It is common to our humanity. And I want us to recognize it, that this is a part of our human nature, that having started out with God, we learn to easily resort to our flesh, especially when the going gets rough. Especially when we come again up against situations that we don't understand or that we don't agree with. We abandon faith and resort to what we are familiar with. Isaac learned that from his daddy. 
At least when Abraham said that Sarah was his sister, she was his half-sister. But Rebekah was Isaac's cousin and he lied because he was depending upon reason when he was in trouble. And all of us do that in our lives. That we come into the church by faith. We get baptized by faith. We get the Holy Ghost by faith. And then all of a sudden, oh, we develop a, a ritual prayer life. Oh, we develop a ritual fasting life. Oh, we develop a, a, a ritual uh, Bible reading life. We, we develop a ritual church attending life. We live uh, a ritualistic life but that doesn't mean we're living by faith because a lot of people go to church but yet refuse to obey the word because I don't understand it or I don't agree with it I go to church I participate in church but yet when it comes to conforming my life to the word of God we resort to reason and we abandon faith so it's an exhortation to stand fast stand firm don't waver don't wobble in your faith be firm walk means continuous movement you were in faith last year. You were in faith five years ago. Great. But what about today? Are you still living by faith today? Paul himself says, I'm an apostle. I'm a bishop. I start churches. I do miracles. I see visions. I got angels that talk to me. But I still need to live by faith. See? And that is what we all need to understand. Next slide. Hebrews 11, the record of faith. It was by faith alone that all this was done. It was by faith that Abel won a witness of righteousness. Enoch, Enoch bypassed death. Noah became heir of righteousness. Abraham went out, not seeing where he went, looking for a city <coughs> whose whose are whose architect was God, became a father, far past age, offered up Isaac, believing God could raise him, and one earth, and one earth's highest honor, he believed God. It was by faith that... Someone else read. Joseph believed God's promises and made disposition of his bones in the hour of his death. Moses chose to esteem the riches of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Next slide, someone else. It was by faith that kingdoms were subdued, righteousness was wrought, promises obtained, lion's mouth stopped, violence quenched, the sword's edge escaped, weakness was made strong, armies of aliens turned to fat flight, dead were raised to life again, and men of weakness walked with balance. These are the men and women in our Bibles who are the evidence of faith. If you want to understand faith, this is how faith is displayed in your Bible. So what type of faith do you have? How, what, what authorizes you to say you have faith? Where, where, where do you get the authority from to say you believe? When, 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 when this describes what 
living faith, overcoming faith, not just saving faith now. These individuals were saved. They were people of God. But they understood that my faith required me to move beyond the elementary stage of just being saved. We are all stuck at that level where we believe God for our salvation. But what about the greater things that God has promised us? Why are we not apprehending them? Why are we not overcoming when he says in his word, faith is the victory? See? So the answer is right there before us. The basic reason why we are not being victorious is because our trust in God is not genuine. Our faith in God is not sound. That's why it's so important for us to understand what faith is. Next slide, please. If we would set ourselves to find the heart of faith as it work for them, we would find that it work for us. It's not a different God that we are serving. It's not another Holy Ghost that we have. The same God, the same Holy Ghost, who wants to do the same things and more. God wants to do the same things and more. He says, greater works than these shall he do. We should not be doing less than these examples give it to us in the scripture and convince ourselves that we have faith. When the Bible says they, all this is written for an example to show us what our relationship with God should look like. Where do we get this image of a right relationship with God that we have convinced ourselves that we have when we are not overcoming in our lives? What have caused us to believe and convince ourselves that we are indeed walking with God? Where do we get the evidence from? Because these people, their evidence was seen in the mighty deeds, the mighty works. And again, not all of them were delivered, but they still died in faith. Their trust in God never, never waned or failed. They were faithful to the end. Today, we jump ship, church hop. Get mad and don't come to church. Get upset and, you know, whatever we do. That's not faithfulness. Bible says we have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. None of us has ever had our head put on a chopping block with somebody saying, deny Christ or die. That's what these people endured. So where, 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 where is the evidence that you truly believe? Yes, you had saving faith. You got saved. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Why are you not overcoming now? Why are you not being victorious now? Could it be that you have lost your faith? Still coming to church. Still praying. But don't have faith. Next slide. Next slide. Reading books about faith, hearing the testimonies of great men of faith, and viewing faith's fantastic record does not produce in us the faith we so desire. 
Millions are confused as to what fate is. They have been victimized by dozens of imposters in the guise of fate. It will be best for us to discover first what is what it is not. There's a whole lot of people who buy fake jewelry thinking it's real. There's a whole lot of people who buy uh, 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 pocketbooks and, and all kind of stuff that are not genuine, but they think it's real. How many of us are operating in a faith that is not real? How many of us are living by a faith that is not real? Let us look at what faith is not. Next slide, go ahead. Faith, faith, is, not, faith is not reasons uh, standing on tiptoes. Wait. Faith is not reason standing on tiptoes. Faith cannot be built by reason. Thus, faith cannot be strengthened by reason. Faith and reason are not necessarily enemies when each takes its proper place. Faith must take the throne of one's life and reason must bow before it in humble obedience. Ah, see? There's a struggle within us between faith and reason. And many of us have not recognized that and don't realize that. And sadly, many of us have begun to think that reason is faith. But reason is of the flesh. Reason is not of the spirit. Therefore, you cannot be walking in the flesh and convince yourself you're walking in the spirit. When you're depending upon your human reasoning to make your decisions, you're no longer operating in faith. Do I need faith to open a bank account? No. I need money and I need reason. Do I need faith to drive a car? No. I need a driver's license. I need a car. So reason has its place in our lives. But when it comes to your spiritual walk with God, you have to put reason on the bottom shelf. You got to discard all the sense of reasoning and learn to operate by faith. It is two different dynamics. You need reason for some things. You need faith to walk with God. And when you try to, you see, that's the problem with the, 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 with the, with the guise of faith today because people want you to use faith for things you're supposed to use reason for. You don't have a job. You don't have no money. You don't got no credit. But they say, go down to the car dealership, lay your hands on the bench, and claim it in Jesus' name. See, they want you to use faith when you're supposed to use reason. You want that car, go get a job. Get your credit score right, and then you get the car. That's reason. But when it comes to holiness, when it comes to love, when it comes to the fruit of the Spirit, you got to throw reason out the window. You cannot depend upon human understanding to absorb and to apply those things in your life. So if I got to understand it and agree with it before I do it, you are no longer walking by faith. And the Bible says whatsoever is not a faith is sin. You are literally positioning yourself outside of God's favor when you trust when you lean on your own understanding when it comes to submitting to the word of God 
Next slide. Faith is not reason giving advice and consent. Reason must bow, bend, and worship faith. Mental consent goes under the guise of faith. Many are convinced that if they get their reason to advise them of the wisdom of waiting on consent, they are having faith in God. Faith is not reason consenting to be quiet for a while. Reason must resign and become a servant to faith. See that? Reason must resign. Reason is of your will. That is something that is produced out of your soul. And if you're going to walk by faith, you cannot walk by your will. Oh my goodness. And that is the biggest problem, church, that we, we've started out in faith. And starting out in faith required repentance, which we have taught you is a form of dying. But we have become zombies. After we've been baptized, after we got the Holy Ghost, all of a sudden, the dead man that was buried comes back to life. And we start to walk by reason again and throw faith out the window. Now, because I'm saved, because I'm in the church, now I got to reason this out and I got to see if I agree. I got to see if I understand. I got, you know, it's got to make sense. And, and, and we want to go through all of this before we obey. But that's not how you got to say. Nobody sat you down through a, 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 a three-year course and gave you a degree on speaking in tongues before you spoke in tongues. You didn't understand it. But you believed and you were blessed. So why is it that the people who are now trying to lead you to a deeper relationship with God, all of a sudden they become your enemies now? Because they're telling you things you don't like. They're telling you things you don't want to hear. They're telling you things you don't understand. And if I don't understand it, well, you got to wait. <laughs> you know, when, 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 when I understand it, then I'll obey it. Folks, that's, that's, that's not it. Reason must resign. That's how you began. That's how you must continue. If there is no trust, there is no love. If there is no love, there is no faith. So if you don't love God, you won't trust God. If you don't trust God, you don't believe in God. And God who is invisible is not going to send a hand out of the skies to write on the clouds. You're not going to hear an audible voice like Israel did in the wilderness to command you what to do. How does God communicate with you? Through his word. Through his servants. So if you don't trust the man of God, you don't love the man of God. If you don't love the man of God, you don't have faith in the man of God who is the vessel that God has chosen. So how can you say you love God who you don't see? And you don't love the man whom he has placed to teach you faith. Because if you don't trust him, you don't love him. You trusted him to get saved. But you don't trust him to live saved. Wow. You trusted him to get saved. But all of a sudden now, he must be telling me something wrong. Because I don't agree with it. Reason must resign. It wasn't a temporary setting aside. Okay? It's not, 
your reason was set aside for a while let me try this thing you know oh man this holy ghost thing real really good wow i think i like this oh uh, now now that i got it now now let's let's get let's bring reason back into the picture that's that's not no reason must die when it comes to your walk with god again use reason in the supermarket use reason on your job use reason for the natural things of life but we must be able to separate the two and place distinction between the two that when it comes to my spiritual walk i cannot walk by reason Otherwise, it no longer becomes a walk of faith and I cannot receive anything from God. Next slide. Next slide. Faith is not emotion dancing for joy. Faith is not feeling. Faith and feeling are not equals. Feeling is not faith's informant, as many suppose. They conclude that they have faith or do not have it on the basis of their feelings. Emotions or feelings have to do with the senses. The senses are the registers of circumstances. Faith has nothing to do with circumstances as we see them. You see? So when, you know... We want to make decisions based on how we feel, right? So when we did the, the, the popular line today is, you know, the Lord has to, you know, uh, convince me of this, or the Lord has to convict me of this, or we're, re we're really saying I got to have a good feeling about it. That's what we're really saying. When, 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 when my emotions towards it, towards whatever it is, when I feel good about it, that's when I will, that's when I know it's the Lord that wants me to do it. <laughs> See? Huh? What if Abraham said, I'm going to wait till I feel good about that land? What if Noah said, I'm going to wait till I feel good about that ark? What if all these heroes of faith approached their test the way that we do today? Waiting on some emotion before we comply. Do you think we would have the heroes of faith? I think not. Because many of the experiences they had to go through, there was nothing good about it. There was nothing to feel good about it. See, so we have to discard this ideology. It is falsehood, it is deception, it is a lie. It is the enemy trying to rob us of the victories that God wants to give us. When we are relying on some emotional experience, or relying on our senses to inform us. Men acted upon faith in the midst of fearful situations. Next slide. The life of emotion draws people away from a life of trusting in God. One cannot trust his feelings and trust in God at the same time. Emotions change with events and seasons, but faith does not change. Saints, again, I commend you for having saving faith. But my problem what I'm trying to address tonight, I'm not trying to tell you you're not saved. What I'm trying to tell you is that you are immature. See? And that is the 14-year-old because they think they're grown. That is the 16-year-old. They think they're grown. I don't need to listen to mama and daddy no more. When in fact, they are still childish in their ways. 
So we have, we, we have come in through saving faith. But once you start to rely on your emotions to make your decisions, to inform you of your choices, you are now being drawn away from a life of trusting in God. And we see our teenagers and young adults, especially when they go off to college and when they gain some freedom and independence and they're away from the oversight of their parents, they make so many foolish mistakes trusting in their emotions, trusting in their hormones, and not relying on the instructions they received when they were children, not trusting in the words of their parents. That is the problem and the dilemma we're having where you, you came in with saving faith. Awesome. But now to grow into maturity rather than continuing to walk in faith, what, rather than continuing to live in faith, we resort, we revert back to the dead ways of depending upon emotions. Emotions change with events and seasons. But when you have faith, faith does not change. Faith does not change. Next slide, please. Faith is not the will at rest in passiv passiv passivity. Never call faith what is really resignation. We mistakenly take for faith anything that puts the will to rest. This opens the door for several of faith's imposters to enter. Laziness can come dressed in the garb of faith. Irresponsibility can take up residence with faith as, it, as its alias. So understand, folks, when your faith only resides in your mind you are really resigning from true faith. See, we, we, we have built this castle. We have built this comfortable space somewhere between absolute doubt and true faith. And where have we built our camp? In this place of passivity where we say we believe, we trick ourselves into making us think we believe, we go through the motions, we go through the rituals, but when it comes time to actively participate in faith, because faith without works is dead, that's when the true test is being given. Anybody can come to church and run up and down the aisles. Anybody can come to church and do the holy dance. Anybody can come to church and speak in tongues. You have saving faith. But when the word is preached, and when the word is taught, and when you are counseled, and when you are instructed, what is your response? That is the test of your faith. See? And we trick ourselves. We build this castle and tell ourselves we have faith. But all the while we are living by reason and human rationale. So therefore, I can be irresponsible in my attitude and my approach. Why? Because my emotions don't direct me to do something. I believe and I'm waiting for some confirmation. I'm waiting for some emo emotional confirmation. That what I 
What the word says I should do, I ought to do it. Or what God says I should do, I ought to do it. I'm waiting to feel good about it. And since I don't feel good about it, I have the right to be irresponsible it, for the time being. I have the right to do nothing for the time being. Why? Because I'm, I'm waiting on my emotions. That's not faith, folks. That's not faith. Next slide. Faith is not hope. Hope is contingent. Faith is certain. Hope is future. Faith is now. Hope says, I believe God will. Faith says, I know God has. Hope may be imagination. Faith is reality. Hope has no present tense, no substance, no immediate rewards for its constituents. Hope looks at what is desired, admires it, enjoys the vision, but does not act upon it. It was not by grace to hope that we were saved. Believe in We lost you there, sis. Believing and hoping are never under any circumstances synonyms. Faith is not hope. And that's how many of us are living. We hope to go to heaven. We hope to see Jesus. Right? And we are living our lives in passivity, imagining some future thing that will be realized while neglecting the vehicle that takes us there. Faith is the substance, the foundation for whatever you're hoping for. We have cast faith out the window and rather have chosen to live a life on hope. You're not saved by grace through hope. It is through abandoning your senses, abandoning your reasoning, believing that what God says has already been done, I don't see it, I don't understand it, but I'm going to obey it simply because he says it. It's already done. That's faith. Faith grasps at the unseen. Reason waits for the seen. As a people, we've got to learn how to operate by faith. The just shall live by his faith. Next slide. Faith is not reason and emotion in agreement. All right. Your emotion and your reason, they come from your soul. Faith comes from your spirit. Understand the difference. You are body, spirit, and soul. That's what makes you a human being. Reason and emotion comes from your soul. Your spirit was your umbilical cord that connected you to God. When Adam sinned, the umbilical cord was cut and man spiritually died, but his soul continued to live. His reason and emotions continued, and Adam learned to function in the world through his soul, through his reason and emotion, absent of the spiritual connection with God because the umbilical cord was cut. And that is what plunged the world and cascaded mankind into sin because of reason and emotion just operating outside of the guidance of the Spirit of God. 
that is what brought the world into the state of calamity that is it is in folks so why now having received the spirit and been reconnected with god through the spirit the umbilical cord has been reattached when you get the holy ghost that means now rather than re depending upon reason and emotion as you did before you got the holy ghost now that you have the spirit of god you're supposed to depend upon the spirit of god because faith is a spiritual attribute it's not a function of the soul or the mind and we are trying to operate in faith from our minds last slide faith not believe in god can it is not the conviction of god opinion it is not even believing god will god capabilities only become reality when that will act on the basis that god already has it done god's capabilities only become realities when the will which is now your soul is not acting based upon its own reasoning but upon what God has already done what God has already spoken. When you bring your will and your mind and your reasoning into submission to what God says, not based upon your understanding, but simply because God says it, now your operating is in faith. Okay? So we must be convicted that God cannot lie. We must be convicted that God is true. We must be convicted that God has our best interest at heart. And when you are convicted that God always has your good, your success is what is on his mind, like that little child who places their hand in the hand of their parents to walk them across the street they have a little doll in their hand and they're looking down at their doll and they're playing with their doll and they don't realize there's a big mac truck that's coming down the street that could smash me and turn me into a pancake i don't care why because i'm holding my parents hand. that is trust that is trust when you put your your hand in God's hand and stop saying, well, I'm not going to cross the street because I see the truck coming. I see the car coming. I'm not going across that street. No, mommy, I'm not coming. No, daddy, I'm not coming. You're saying, I don't trust you to lead me. I got to see for myself. I don't trust God to lead me. And this whole concept of God somehow leading us without human intervention. It's another way the enemy, it's another means the enemy uses to snare us and capture our souls. Listen, if you don't trust your pastor, find a pastor you trust. It does you or your pastor no good if you call him pastor but you don't trust him it does neither one of us any good folks because he will be trying to lead you and you are not going to want to follow so it creates a tension it creates frustration because you're trying to lead a people who want to lead themselves. Folks, let's make it easy. Find a pastor you trust and follow him. It will make serving God so much better for everyone involved. If you think your leaders mean you so bad, 
that what they are telling you it's nonsensical it is irrelevant you're just trying to put a burden on me trying to bring me under bondage and all these things we convict ourselves and convince ourselves that oh the same voices that God used to bring me salvation the same voices that God used to bring a blessing into my life all of a sudden those voices mean me harm now because I don't agree with what they say I don't believe what they're saying God has to speak to me for himself that's not faith folks you started out in faith the only way you're going to be an overcomer is if you continue to walk in faith trusting in God resigning to your own reasoning your own rationale your own understanding and allowing God to have his way in your life. That's the only way you're going to grow, folks. God bless you. I really hope this helps somebody tonight. We are on a journey through our scriptures. We are dealing with the aspect of the fruit of the Spirit called faith or faithfulness. We pray that it's been a blessing to you if you have not yet subscribed to this channel hit the subscribe button share it with your friends feel free to ask questions we can have a discussion we want you to grow we want to help you in your walk with God God bless you until next time